You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. But they should be. Views expressed are not necessarily those of a lot of people, but they should be. James over here with you. A word from the Lord coming to you tonight. Glad you're with us. Our contact information is on the screen behind us here. My phone number is 276-340-2653. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you'd like to reach me by email, have a Bible study that way. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube and all sorts of places. If you'd like to watch um, some programs, uh, old programs, we're getting some archived programs up on YouTube. So find us that way as well. And uh, any way you can reach us, we'd be glad to uh, have a Bible study with you. If you'd like for us to come out to your house, we'd be glad to do that as well. I hope my, my voice holds out a little bit better than it did last week. And uh, so, but anyway, if you would like to uh, uh, join us on the program tonight, our phone lines will be open uh, after a little bit, and we'll get into our lesson, and you can call in. And so, but uh, we always want to uh, remind you how you can reach us. If you're on, uh, <clears throat> if you're in uh, the Eden area, two feet of the boulevard is where we meet. You see our promos coming up uh, before and after the program, and also uh, uh, Martinsville, H-23 Starting Avenue, 120 American Legion in Danville. And you can reach your brethren there. I know you would always receive a, a warm welcome, and we hope that you will come out and join us whenever you have the opportunity. And if you don't have the opportunity, well, we encourage you to make time to do that. We'd love to see you. I want to start off tonight by playing a call that came in last week. And uh, some of the things that were said on this call, I thought were very insightful. Now, we had three calls last week right there toward the end. The last call, the very last call, was actually a very good call. But that's not the one we're talking about tonight. We're talking about the one that came in first and second, and it's the same caller. But I want you to listen carefully to what she says. And then I want you to uh, uh, consider, thank you, sir. And then I want you to consider uh, some of the points that we're going to make uh, about this, about what she says here. Uh, listen, y'all, y'all men are just terrible. Going in churches and 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 and, and exposing their services and so forth on the TV, just just to make yourself. Look good. When Jesus taught, he didn't go in the synagogues and places and make fun and come back and, and, and take pictures and all that kind of thing. Y'all supposed to, if you're teaching, teach with love. You are in a state, snake. You ain't nothing but old Satan itself. Ma'am. Uh, condemning people and fussing and carrying on. Jesus didn't teach like that. He taught calmly and with love. You don't reach people by being so mean. And, mm. and, and not understanding. <clears throat> okay. And going into churches and coming out and showing it all on TV and so forth. That's not teaching. Okay. That's being mean and ugly and conniving. Mm. You're just going for one purpose. That's to expose people, worship, and, and, and to make yourselves look good. Jesus didn't do uh that. I cannot point to you to, to get off the TV with that foolish well. thing. Ma'am, are you going to let me talk now? You talked for two and a half minutes. Well, sir, well, that's what you need. So, that ain't oh, long enough. Okay, that all right. Long all right, thanks for your call. You on the air? Yes. You all are con confused folks, too. You are con confused and, and nuts, and fruit is nuts. How are we confused, ma'am? Yes. I, can, I can show you. I can show you why I worship the way I do from the New Testament. Can you show me what, what you worship in the Bible? Can you show me how you worship from the Bible? Y'all are pitiful. Can you give me a scripture for that? Y'all are really pitiful. Can you give me a scripture? Y'all need to sit down and think about all of this stuff that you say. Can you give me a scripture? And stop judging other folks. 
Can you give me a scripture? I'd like to hear a word from the Lord. No, I'm not going to give any scripture. That's what I thought. Because That's what I thought. All are giving, you all are saying things from the Bible, reading from the Bible, and in y'all's interpretation. But why don't you read something from the Bible? But all of us have interpretations, and I'm not going to be one to quote from the Bible and, and, and confusing people and not knowing what Jesus is saying. And go and sit up under other folks and try to learn. You need to try to learn <clears throat> from the witnesses. From the Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, you all are so condemning. Well, are you condemning That's me? Why they don't Ma'am, come. are you condemning me? Are you condemning me? You're condemning me. Y'all are just pitiful folks. Are you condemning me, ma'am? Yes, you all are pitiful. Okay, so I'm glad to know that you're a hypocrite. You, 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 you're putting me down for condemning people, and then you're doing the very same thing. That's called hypocrisy. Jesus would call it hypocrisy, yeah. ma'am. All right, have a good night. All right, now... <clears throat> I cut out a lot of my uh, interruptions and everything just so you could hear her. And, then, and um, you know, I talked about some of the things she said after she called in. But I got to thinking, you know, there's a lot of individuals that say to us what this lady said, and that is that we are not like Christ. We don't do the things that Christ did. We don't do things the way that Christ did those things. And so, you know, when people tell me, be like Jesus, you need to be more like Jesus, then I agree with that. You know, the Bible clearly says in 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 and verse 21, uh, Peter says, For even unto were you, uh, hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. And so, you know, when people say, well, you need to be more like Christ, well, that's exactly right. We do need to be more like Christ. And so, I want to follow in his example. I want to follow his footsteps. And so I want to do the things that, that he did. I want to do the things in the way that he did if I want to be like Christ. And so uh, following Christ's example sometimes is uh, difficult if you don't know what that example is. All right? If you don't know what that example is or you don't know what he did, then it's very difficult to do those things. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, he said, but be ye followers of me, and that's, that's the word examples, be ye examples of me, or be ye imitators, I'm sorry, be ye imitators of me, even as I also am of Christ. And so if we're going to imitate Paul, who imitated Christ, then we have to know what these people did. So if we're going to look at, uh, at Jesus, we're going to be more like Jesus, and we're going to do the things that Jesus did are not do things differently than what he did, then we have to know what that example is. You know, so what did he do? You know, people wear those wristbands. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And a lot of times, they're just like this lady that called in. They'll tell you what Jesus would do, but they haven't examined what Jesus did. And so I want to take some of the things she said and just see if Jesus did those things or not. She said Jesus didn't do those things, and so I want to see if did Jesus really do those things or did he not do those things. Now, let's start off with this. And One of the things she said was, she said, Jesus was not mean. Jesus was not mean, all right? Uh, he, uh, uh, Jesus didn't do those things. You know, Jesus was not like that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. All right, Jesus didn't do that. Well, you know, I have to think, when someone says Jesus didn't do that, he wasn't mean, um, what does that mean? What does being mean mean? If someone says, well, he, he, Jesus was not mean, what, what does that mean? What does being mean really mean, you know? It's, it's kind of subjective, is it not? Think about it, friends. If someone says you're being mean, then they're characterizing you, something you said, did, or otherwise, as being offensive, selfish, unaccommodating, malicious, nasty, whatever. And if you say, well, Jesus never was mean, okay, I'll agree with that. Unless you're in the other person's shoes. 
Because somebody might say something or do something and they not think it's mean. But then someone else might be the recipient of, uh, of the same thing and they may say it's mean. Like Mark might say, James, you, you need to have your car painted. Well, you know, I, I could take offense to that. I thought, what do you mean he's judging my car? You know, you've been all judgmental and, you know, uh, uh, self-righteous because you've got a nice, pretty car. you got a good paint job on your car. Mine, the paint's peeling everything. Deer hit it. Paint's chipped off. Well, it doesn't change the fact that my car doesn't need painting. You know, there's some peeling paint on it. So it would be true in that regard. So just because Mark said my car needs painting, that's not being mean. Being mean is just how I took it. But that doesn't mean that Mark was being mean. See that? So when someone says, well, y'all being mean, well, maybe what we're doing is we're doing the same thing Jesus did, and you're just taking it as being mean. And if Jesus had said the same thing to you, you'd probably say the same thing about him. Now, how do I know that? I know that because I know how people react to the truth. I know how people are when they hear the truth. In, in Galatians 4 and verse 6, Galatians 4 and verse 16, I'm sorry, Galatians 4, 16, Paul said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Now, if you read through the book of Galatians, the apostle Paul, he was pretty mean, if you want to use that term, to some of these Galatians. I mean, he called them bewitched. Um, Galatians 3 and verse 1, he said, Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? You're foolish. All right? Uh, uh, now, wouldn't that be kind of tough? I mean, that'd be kind of, that's kind of a mean thing to say. No, it's not mean. He didn't intend for it to be mean, but maybe the way some per person heard that took it as being mean. You know, if you think about who Paul wrote to in the book of Galatians, he wrote to the churches of Galatia. He wrote to the churches of Galatia. That is, more than one congregation of the Lord's people were reading this letter. Now, one congregation might have heard Paul read this, and they said, well, that, that, you know, Paul's right. And nobody might have thought he was being mean. But surely, in all these congregations that heard it, somebody might have said, well, man, Paul, just kind of, he's getting kind of mean and hateful, telling us we're, we're foolish. You know, we're... We're, we're kind of bewitched here. We're, we're silly. So, was Paul being mean? No. He wasn't being mean. He's just telling them the truth. And they might have taken it as being mean, as Paul being mean, but really it was on them. It was how they looked at the truth and how they viewed being told what they were being told. In John 8, John 8 and verse 40, listen to what the Bible says Jesus said. Now, look. let's back up to verse... 38. Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. And they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, you would do the works. You would do the works uh, of Abraham. Verse 40. Uh, he says, But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. Now, was Christ being mean when he told them, you are not like your father Abraham? Jesus, you're being mean. You're being mean, see? Well, they must have thought he was being mean because they wanted to kill him. See, friends, my point is if telling the truth is being mean, then maybe I am being like Jesus. Maybe you shouldn't say Jesus didn't do that. and Maybe you should say, hey, you're being like Jesus because Jesus did that. Jesus was mean in that sense because what he said got people so angry. It offended them. It was malicious to them. It was a nasty a statement to them. It was highly offensive. So in that regard, if you were in their shoes, you'd say, hey, that's, that's mean. But friends, it wasn't mean. What Jesus was doing was out of love. So if you want to say I'm mean, then maybe you need to back up and say, well, Maybe you need to back up and look and consider how are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I say, telling you the truth? Is what I'm saying in agreement with the Bible? Now, the lady said, well, you, you know, everybody got, you just using your own interpretation. Well, 
I thought everybody got their own interpretation, don't they? Isn't that what we're told, Mark? Everybody, everybody gets their own interpretation. Well, why is it that my interpretation is so mean? See, friends, even, even when you're trying to get around hearing the truth, you can't get around it. You see, I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, if you take what I'm saying, if you take what I'm saying uh, as being mean, maybe you just need to look at yourself. At least some before you look at me. All right, now, I, I, I'll admit I have to work on my presentation. As Brother John Shannon says, I have to smile a little bit. I'm not your, I'm not your enemy. I'm your friend. And what I'm saying to you, if it sounds mean, then maybe you should consider if you are just being offended by the truth. All right? So do what Jesus did. All right? I'm trying to be like Jesus. Now, the lady said, well, Jesus didn't go into the synagogue. You know, we, we talked about, we show videos of, of people we talk Jesus with, and places that. we go. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Really? Really? Now, one of the illustrations I gave her last week was, was different from this one. Here's another one. Look at this. Jesus, um, on his first trip home, Let's look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. I want you to consider, I want you to consider, um, was Jesus being mean? And did Jesus go into the, the synagogues in a place of worship? And did he uh, uh, say and do mean things? Now, let's back up here and let's look in verse uh, 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. This is after his temptation and there went out fame of him throughout all the region round about. Verse 15, and he taught in the synagogues and glorified and was glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, that's his hometown. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, now look, apparently he'd done this before. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So apparently it was common for him to go into the synagogue and read. Now let's look at verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place, he found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. All right, verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again unto the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. Verse 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said unto him is not this Joseph's son and he said unto them ye will surely say unto me this proverb physician heal thyself whatsoever ye have heard we have heard done in Capernaum do here in thy country and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I'll tell you the truth. Now, he's going to give them an illustration why they won't accept him. He said, I'll tell you the truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was, all, was, uh, was throughout all the land. But what happened? But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. See that? God didn't send his prophet to somebody in Israel, a widow in Israel. He sent it to someone else. He went, went all the way to, to uh, 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 Sidon. And many lepers were in, the, in Israel in the time of Elias, the prophet, and none of them was clean, save Naaman the Syrian. And they all in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Now, now listen, he's, he's giving them a sermon. He's giving them some practical application to his sermon. And notice the reaction. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city 
and led him into the brow of the hill whereupon the city, their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. They were ready to throw him out, not, not only of the synagogue, they were ready to throw him out, throw him out of town, and, and kill him. Now, are you sure? Are you sure that what we're doing is something uh, unlike what Jesus did? You know, we've had people threaten us, call in. We've had brethren uh, be threatened, you know, being shot. Uh, Mark and Michael went down to a Baptist church, and the guy calls in and says, Y'all lucky y'all got there alive. The preacher might have killed you. Really? Really? And you say that we're doing something foreign to what Jesus did? You know? We, we, we get on the air here. People call in, call us names, curse us. Really? And that's our fault? We're doing something wrong? Sounds to me like Jesus did that. Sounds to me like that's what Jesus did. And then, this is the illustration that I gave the lady last week. Jesus went uh, on his trip to Jerusalem. His first trip to Jerusalem in John chapter 2. John chapter 2 and verse uh, uh, 14. He found, uh, let's back up. Yeah, verse 14, he found... Uh, in the temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changed the money, when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples, remember that it was written, the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. Now, you might say in, in one sense, yeah, we're not like Jesus. We hadn't overturned tables. We hadn't drove people out and, and whipped them. But when it comes to being righteously indignant about people abusing or uh, falsely worshiping God or taking God's name in vain or worshiping him in vain, then, yes, we've been righteously indignant. So, yes, Jesus did that. So the things that we did, yes, Jesus did. Now, the lady said, well, Jesus didn't, take, didn't go into these temples and take his recording, right? He didn't take his camera. And he didn't expose all these people. Well, friends, he did expose them. He did expose them. We'll get into that in a moment. He didn't go into the temple. He went to the synagogue. He stirred people up when he went. Yes, sir, he did. He went into places uh, of, of, of worship. He went to these places, and uh, yes, he got them all stirred up. And someone says, well, he, uh, uh, he didn't take his camera. Well, are you sure? Because when I, read, when I read the Bible, I read about Jesus going in these places of worship. I read about him getting people stirred up, so yes, he did that. But he also took his recorder. He took his recorder. Now, someone said, what do you mean, James? He didn't, take his, he didn't take his camera. I didn't say he took his camera. He took his recorder, though. How do you even know that he did those things? How do you know that he went to the temple? It's recorded for us in the Bible. Oh, it's what? It's recorded. It's recorded. The Holy Spirit recorded it. The Holy Spirit preserved it for generation and generation and generations to come so that we know exactly what Jesus did, exactly what he said. Yeah, it's preserved, friends. It's in something that's, that's uh, uh, it's, it's preserved in such a way that it's better. It's better than a, uh, a video camera, video recording. You know why? Because a video recording, I don't care how much you preserve it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to deteriorate. It, it's going to get lost. It's going to be ruined. But the word of God will never pass away. And yet, we have recorded by the Holy Spirit the things that Jesus did. The divine recorder was there. The divine recorder has preserved what happened so that we'll know what Jesus did. So don't say, well, it wasn't recorded. Oh, it was recorded all right. It was recorded all right. In John 14, verse 26, John 14, 26, Jesus said, the Comforter, which is the Holy, Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things 
to your remembrance. In John 16, in verse 13, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He's going to bring all things to your remembrance. He's going to, he's going to tell you what happened so you can write it down. So yes, friends, when you say, well, Jesus didn't go into these temples to stir people up, yes, he did. And you say, well, Jesus didn't take his recorder. Yes, he did. So before you start saying, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't, maybe you need to read what Jesus did, Jesus did, Jesus did. You say, Jesus didn't do this, he did. Jesus did those things. Jesus did those things. Now someone said, well, Jesus, you know, the lady said, well, you know, Jesus loved people. And y'all are just a bunch of mean snakes. Mean, mean old conniving snakes. You know, Jesus, Jesus taught with love. Jesus, uh, he taught with, with humility. He taught uh, uh, and, and humbly. That's how Jesus taught. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't go in and teach, be mean, which we've covered being mean, right? We've covered that. But what Jesus did, he taught humbly with love. Well, that's kind of the opposite of being mean, isn't it? So think about this, friends. If being mean may depend on who is listening, see, it's kind of subjective, then maybe when you say Jesus used love and he taught humbly with love, maybe that's kind of subjective too. Maybe you really haven't read all that's recorded about what Jesus did and how Jesus did. Maybe you haven't stopped to consider everything that Jesus said and did because Jesus, you know, you, you talk about us being snakes. Jesus actually used snakes when he taught. He said in Matthew 10 and verse 16, Matthew 10 and verse 16, Jesus said, I'm, I'm sending you out as forth the sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as doves. He said, you need to be wise as snakes. So while you're calling us snakes, maybe you're missing it. Maybe we're being wise as snakes. But you say, well, you know, y'all are just a bunch of snakes. Well, okay. If you're saying I'm a snake, that's fine. I don't mind being, I don't mind that. That's what Jesus did. Jesus called people snakes. But you know what, friends? When Jesus called people snakes, it was because of their reaction to the truth. It was because of what they were doing compared to the word of God. So if you want to call me a snake, that's fine. But I'm going to look and say, well, now, am I a snake because I'm wise as a serpent? Or am I a snake... Am I a snake because I'm being contrary to the word of God? See, there's two ways you can use that. So again, perspective here. You're talking about being mean and loving, being mean or being loving. You're talking about Jesus being teaching humbly and we're being snakes. Well, maybe, maybe you kind of all got things twisted and turned here. Look at this. In Matthew 12, verse 34, Jesus said, O generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, when I hear people telling me that I shouldn't be doing certain things because Jesus didn't, and I hear them calling me conniving, and I hear them saying I'm a snake, and I hear them saying that we're bullies, and I hear them saying that that uh, uh, we're mean, then I have to stop and say, no, wait a minute. Are those, are those things coming out of your mouth because you're being contrary to the Bible? See, a lot of times the people that are doing opposite of what God says are the ones that are doing all the name calling. They're, they're actually wicked ones. Now, how can you being evil Say good things. So when I hear people talk bad about me or, mouth, or bad mouth me, I'd say, you know what? 
I know these people don't really know who Jesus is. They don't know how Jesus used these terms. Jesus called people who were wicked and evil. He called them snakes. Now, if you think I'm wicked and evil, let's go to the Bible. See, I don't have a problem being judged by the Bible. I don't have, being pro I don't have a problem with someone coming up and saying, well, here's what the Bible says and this is what you're doing wrong, okay? If you can show me I'm wrong and, and, you, and, I, and I can change, you've done me a favor. But if I'm showing you where you're wrong and I'm showing you where you can change, then don't call me a snake. Don't call me a snake. But Jesus called people snakes. In Matthew chapter 23, in verse 33, he said, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus called people snakes. Now, if Jesus called people snakes, is that loving or is that unloving? Now, see, the caller is going to have to think carefully about this. Because the caller might say, well, see, I'm be she was being like Jesus. She was calling me a snake. Okay. If that's true, if that's true, then you're going to have to show me where I'm doing something contrary to the Bible. Because thus far, what I've showed is we're actually doing things more like Christ. We're actually not being snakes in the evil sense. We're being wise as snakes because we're doing what the Christ did. We're doing what our Savior did. So, yeah, Jesus called people snakes. He did that. But you know what else he did? The Bible says he taught boldly and plainly. And while people are saying, well, you need to be soft and gentle and loving and compassionate, well, you can be all those things, friends, and still be bold in your speech. You know what Jesus did? Look at this. In John 7, 26, John 7 and verse 26 John 7, 26, the people said, He speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? He's speaking boldly. Now that word boldly, it means with plainness, with unreservedness, all right? He didn't pull any punches. How do, how do I know Jesus spoke this way? He was, he was plain in his speech, right? He was very plain in his speech. Look at this, in John in John 11 and verse 14, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now when you look at the context, he's telling them we need to go see Lazarus and wake him up because he's sleeping. And the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about Lazarus was taking a nap, just, just sleeping, just slumbering. All right? They thought he had told, spoken of taking a rest. You know, you think, well, why don't they just think about that? I mean, Jesus is the only one that can wake Lazarus up? Is he that sound of a sleeper? You mean Mary and Martha couldn't wake him up? You know, he didn't have an alarm clock. You know, the rooster wasn't, couldn't crow and wake him up? Can't throw a bucket of water on him and wake him up? No, Jesus has to go wake him up. So finally, he just says, I'm telling you plainly. Lazarus is dead, all right? Lazarus is dead. Now, friends, if I'm going to be like Jesus, if I'm going to be like Jesus and I'm going to speak plainly, then sometimes I just have to come out and say, sometimes I'm just going to come out and say what is, what is the truth here. Sometimes I'm just going to come out and say, this is what I'm talking about. You know, I've been told, well, you, you don't need to talk about all these different denominations if you just speak the truth. Everybody else will get it. No. Not everybody. Not everybody. See, sometimes you have to be plain and you can say this. There's one church in the Bible and it's the church of Christ. Now, that's pretty plain because everybody understands that. But you know what? Most people now in the denominational world, they're going to say, yeah, we're all members of the church of Christ. So I have to be plain. I have to be very plain. Kind of like Jesus said about Lazarus. Lazarus is dead. Let me, let me just spell it out for you. He D-E-A-D, -E dead. Friends, when we're talking about the church, there's one church in the Bible. It's the church of Christ. It's the church that Christ built. It's the body of Christ. Now, I, gotta be, I, have, to be plain, I have to be very plain here. 
If you're in a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Catholic, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, if you're in any of those churches or all those churches, you're not in the Church of Christ. That is not the Church of Christ. I just don't know how to, how to tell you any plainer. And unless you're in the Church of Christ, friends, you're going to be lost. That means you're going to spend eternity in hell. Now, see, I'm, I'm trying to be nice when I say that, but I'm trying to tell you plainly as well. See, I don't want you to be lost. That's why I tell you. Now, that's what Jesus did. Jesus spoke plainly. And he spoke in such a way that people got his meaning. In Matthew 21, verse 33 through 45, Jesus is going to tell a parable. I'm not going to take the time to read this. Thank you, Matt. I'm not going to take the time to read that because it's, it's kind of lengthy to read, but I want you to notice that in this parable, he is talking about the Jews and he's using an illustration of a, of a man that sends his son to take care of his vineyard. And the, the husbandmen, the men that are taking care of the vineyard, eventually kill all the servants and then they kill the son. And Jesus said, what's going to happen to those men that killed the servants and killed the son? And they said, he will, he will miserably destroy those wicked men. Okay. And then Jesus said, and then they concluded, he's talking about us. Friends, if we're being plain, if we're being plain, you may come to realization, you know what? I'm talking about you. You're on the word from the Lord. Hi, James. You know, I think a lot of the viewers, they, they, when they say, you're not like Jesus or whatever, and you need to smile a little bit more or something, they're, they're looking for the visual. They, they, uh, they're, you know, Joe Olstein. He's probably got ten thousand dollars worth of teeth in that smile that he puts on, and and they got the crucifixion behind them, and the choirs, and and all the thousands of dollars background and backdrop and stuff. People need to quit looking at the picture and start looking at the words and listening to the words that y'all put out. Right, right. <clears throat> well, I agree with you. Yeah. People, people need to, if they would, if they let the word paint you a picture of Jesus, right? Yes. A picture is worth a thousand words, but we don't have any pictures of what he looked like or what he did. You know, we don't have a movie to watch. That's why you need to read the book and let the book paint a picture of what Jesus was really like. That's really good. All right. I appreciate that. Either that, either that or maybe they want you to wear a pink tutu and come out there and get attention for well, you. <clears throat> I don't think that'd work. You know, G John the Baptizer, he wore uh, camel's hair and leather girdle and ate, ate honey and wild locusts, and they didn't listen to him. And Jesus came almost just the opposite of John the Baptist, and they didn't listen to him either. So uh, the bottom line is they're going to have to listen to the Bible if they're going to really know what Jesus right. is like. Exactly. So, I appreciate you. All right. I appreciate your program. All right. Have a good, have a good night. All right. So now, now you want to talk about being plain? Look. Friends, Jesus came right on out and he just said this. People are hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. Now, when, when the caller last week said that, that we're mean and conniving, well, what would you call this about Jesus? In, in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Hypocrites. He just came flat out and called them hypocrites. Hypocrites. He said, you, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye uh, neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them that, uh, that are entering to go in. You're prohibiting people who would go in from going in. And then he says in verse 14, he says, Woe unto you, uh, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, ye devour widows' houses, and, and for a pretense make long prayers. Now, friends, if you plainly and clearly set out what people are doing, are you being mean? Are you being more like Jesus? People say, oh, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was loving. Well, would you call this loving then? Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus called, look, in verse 17, Matthew 23, verse 17, look at this. Jesus called them fools. He says, you blind guides. And then in verse 17, he called them fools. You fools and blind. Now, I guess if I'm going to be like Jesus... If I'm going to be like Jesus, maybe what I need to do is I need to just, when people call in, start being rebellious against the truth. Right? When they show that they're being hypocritical, maybe what I need to do is start calling them fools. 
Call them blind. See, that's why I called the lady hypocrite. The lady said, I shouldn't be condemning people. And I said, are you condemning me? She said, yes. I said, you're a hypocrite. That's what Jesus did. Ma'am, you're being hypocritical. You're saying one thing and doing another. Now, that's what Jesus did. Friends, I have to be plain. I have to be like Jesus, right? Jesus actually came right out and called people the children of the devil. Now, friends, I don't know if you'd call that loving or not. Most people say, well, that doesn't very loving. But Jesus did it. In John 8, 44, look at this. John 8, 44. Here they are. This is the same context where they, were going to, they wanted to kill Jesus. Year of your father, the devil, the lust of your father, will ye, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And when Jesus said these things, friends, you know, you want to talk about getting people uh, upset and, you know, all uh, uh, crying and, and mad. Jesus called these folks children of the devil. And look what they want to do to him. Come down here. Let's look. What did they want to do to, do to him? In verse, uh, in verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Oh, wait. He was in the temple when he said that? Jesus, don't you know you're not supposed to go into these places of worship and get people stirred up, get them so angry that they want to kill somebody? That they want to cast stones at you? That they want to throw you out? Well, apparently Jesus didn't get that memo because Jesus did that. So I said, oh, Jesus didn't do that. Oh, yes. Jesus did that. Jesus did that. Uh, someone says, well, now, they say, well, Jesus, you know, y'all always condemning and judging, and Jesus didn't do that. Well, friends, if, if calling people children of the devil is not condemning and judging, I don't really know what is, but just in case that wasn't satisfy, satisfying to you, I wish you'd please consider that Jesus did that. Jesus condemned people. And Jesus did judge people. No, have you not read? Jesus said in Matthew 15 and verse 13, he said about these people who were using traditions in place of the word of God, he said, every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. That's pretty judgmental, is it not? He said, Leave them alone, let them alone. They'd be blind leaders of the blind. We've already seen Jesus call people blind. And if they... And if they blindly the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. Pretty judgmental, Jesus. Pretty, pretty condemning. But just in case it's not condemning enough, would you consider this? Would you consider this? In John 8 and verse 32, John 8 verse 32, Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. All right? Now notice this. Uh, they said, are we, are we in sin? They asked him later on, are we in sin? And he said, yes. You're on the word of the Lord. Thank you. Hello. You're, hello. Hello. You're on the air. Turn your TV down. Okay. Got a how question? How are you this evening? How are you this evening? I'm fine. How are you doing? Got a question? Yes, sir. Um, I was once told by a lady that... Uh, uh, came to Martinsville and started the Church of Christ in her home. She came from Tennessee, from an orphanage in Tennessee, and she came to Martinsville, I think it was maybe right after the war, uh, World War II, maybe 47, or maybe she came in 42, she and her husband and daughter, and she 
where she took me a couple of times. She once told me that in the Bible, there's a verse that said, Holy, re, holy and reverent is thy name, meaning only God can be called holy and reverent. Right. Could you please tell me if you know where that verse is? It says, Holy and reverent are thy name. All right, it's Psalm 111 and verse 9. I'll put it on the screen okay. for you. Psalm 111, uh, 9. Thank you, sir. She said people, uh, she had gotten a letter from someone named Reverend, and that's, that he was asking for money, and she told me that one time. Right. So thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Left topic, but that's all right. See, we can give it. We can give a Bible answer, and that's really good. All right, all right. So now someone says, "Well, Jesus, Jesus wasn't like that." Oh, really? Jesus called people child of the devil. He said that they were in sin, and then he said, "Then when you convert someone to what you're doing in Matthew 23 and verse 15, he said you make them a twofold child of the devil. All right, you make him a twofold child of the devil." You're a child of the devil, and when you teach someone what you're teaching, you make them a twofold child of the devil. Now, is that kind of harsh? Jesus, that, that, that's, that's not unloving. Well, Jesus did it. Oh, Jesus didn't do that. Yes, Jesus did do that. Jesus did do that. And if you're really not convinced that Jesus condemned people, I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. Jesus said a person would be condemned in John 3, 16. John 3, verse 16, notice this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, most people know that verse. But let's look at the next verse. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now Jesus said you'll be condemned if you don't believe. You'll be condemned if you don't believe. Now, when Jesus also said something about being damned, Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, Go into all the world, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, Jesus, that's kind of judgmental. That's kind of judgmental for you to say that. Kind of condemning for you to say that, that they will be damned if they don't believe and be baptized. Now, sometimes someone says, well, James, it, does, it, does, it says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but it doesn't say he that believeth not and is baptized not shall be damned. That's exactly right. Because John 3.18 says, if you don't believe, you're, you're condemned already. You don't have to get in the water to be condemned. See, you're condemned because you never believed. We're not talking about what must you do to be saved. We're talking about what you must do to be damned. To be damned, you don't have to believe. I mean, don't believe if you want to be damned. But I, my point is, Jesus talked about people being damned, being condemned. I know somebody's out there thinking, well, James, that's Jesus, though. Jesus is the one who condemned these people, and Jesus is the one who judged these people. Well, that's right. That's right. But you know what? Jesus said, Jesus said in John 12, 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. You know what, friends? You don't have to have Jesus right here standing before you to be judged. The Word is what's condemning you. The Word's what's going to judge you. And so all I'm doing when I'm supposedly being mean and harsh is I'm just telling you the same thing Jesus would tell you if He were here today. If Jesus were here today, you know what He'd tell you? He'd, he'd tell you, Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And who shall believe not shall be damned. So I'm not telling you anything Jesus wouldn't tell you. 
As a matter of fact, I'm telling you every, exactly the same thing Jesus would tell you. So tell me again how I'm not being like Jesus. How about this, friends? How about you reconsider and consider that, you know what, maybe I'm being more like Jesus than any preacher you've ever heard. How about that? How about you consider the fact that, you know what, maybe I'm more of your friend and I'm being more like Jesus because I'm actually telling you what Jesus would say. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it or water it down or whitewash it. I'm actually just telling you plainly, friends, this is what Jesus would do. This is what Jesus did. And I'm telling you the exact same thing he did. Now, there's one more thing the lady said <clears throat> that I want to talk about. And it was right there toward the end of the, of the call. And I want to try to play that little part here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Go and sit up under other folks. And you all need to learn from the Jehovah. Now, listen to what she says right here. I want you to listen to what she says. On this one part right here. Well, you're you're touting them as someone to listen to. So, are, have you done nice that? People, they are nice people, and they teach with love and. I don't deny that, but you know what, ma'am? I've asked the Jehovah's Witness to come have a Bible study with me twice, and they've never come back to my house. They come knocked on my door. I said, I'd like to have a Bible study with y'all. I give them my name, my address, my phone number. No one calls back. You know why? I don't think they want to study the Bible. So, well, you need to go sit, sit in their congregation. I've been over there, and I've asked them to come have Bible study. They won't come. You ask me to have Bible study, I'll come to your house. You all are so condemning. You all are so condemning. Well, are you condemning That's me? Why they don't Ma'am, come. are you condemning me? Are you condemning me? Here it is. You're Listen. condemning me. You all are just pitiful folks. Are you condemning me, ma'am? Yes, you all are pitiful. Okay, so. All right. <clears throat> She's condemning me, but I want you to hear her say we're pitiful. Y'all are just pitiful folks. You know what, friends? When someone tells me that I'm pitiful, you know what I think of? I think immediately, you know what? I'm like Jesus. That makes me like Jesus. I don't mind being called pitiful. Look at this. In, Ma in James chapter 5, in verse 11, James 5 and verse 11, Behold, we count them happy that endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and ye have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful. The Lord is very pitiful and full of tender mercy. And of tender mercy. He's pitiful. See, friends, people don't realize it, but when you say that I'm pitiful, you're actually paying me a compliment. Because what that means, that means I'm full of pity. Jesus was full of pity. In Matthew 9, 36, Matthew 14, 14, Jesus looked at people and he had compassion on them. He had pity on them. And the result was in, Matthew, in Mark 6, 34, look at this. In Mark 6 and verse 34, the Bible says Jesus, when he had came out and saw the people, he was moved with compassion. That word is, is, is pitiful, is pity. He was full of pity toward them because they were sheep not having a shepherd. And what did he do? And he began to teach them many things. You know what, friends? When you say that I'm pitiful, I appreciate that because I want to be like Jesus. I have pity on people who are without instruction on what God would have them to do. And therefore, I want to teach them. I want to be full of pity. I want to be full of pity. When people say, y'all, y'all are pitiful. I say thank you very much because that's exactly like Jesus was. Remember Jane, uh, Peter said to be examples, are we to follow Christ's example? 1 Peter 2, 21. Well, look at 1 Peter 3, 8. He says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful. Be courteous. Now, I know what the lady meant. The lady meant that I'm pitiable, that I'm pathetic. But you know what, friends? I believe that I'm showing pity when I tell people what the Bible says they need to do to be saved. All right, we've got one call here, and I've only got about a minute. So here we go. Let's see if it's a good call. You're on the word of the Lord. 
Turn your TV down, please. So you ain't pitiful. You just a damn dog. All right. There we go. There it is. <clears throat> he likes to call at the very end. You know what, friends? That just shows me that I'm like Christ again. You know, Jesus said, blessed are ye when men shall re revile you. Right? And that's fine because you know what? I have pity on that man. I have pity on him because I know one day he's going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ like we all are. And yet he has had opportunity and opportunity and opportunity to hear the gospel, to obey the gospel, and yet instead of embracing it, humbling himself, as Jesus said you must do, become like a little child in order to come to the kingdom, he instead hardens his heart and rebels against it. Well, I hope and I pray that he has time, like everyone else, to obey the gospel and conform to the gospel, the doctrine that is set forth here in the Bible, Romans 6 and verse 17. Friends, when someone says, I'm not like Christ, well, I think I am. I think I'm trying to be like Christ by being plain, being bold in my teaching, stirring people up, and if it makes them mad, then you know what, friends, maybe they should look at themselves. Friends, I want you to know that I care about you, and your friends in the Church of Christ, they care about you too, and if we can assist you in any way, let us be compassionate and pitiful to you. Let's be full of mercy to you by helping you. Here's my content information. Come see us at the boulevard, 250 Boulevard. Until next time, friends, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.